21 clip. He has 26 runs batted in and 23 stolen bases. Caden Radzik, 351, 23 runs batted in and 19 steals to lead the, or tie actually, to lead the Rams in the second category next to Dalton Wolfram. Ram staff, Corbin Castillo comes in at 6-2. He's pitched great over the last two weeks. Has an overall season area of 1.54. He has two straight shutouts to his credit over state-ranked Patrick Henry two weeks ago. And then last Friday, threw a one-hitter at the Brian Golden Bears. Looking at the visiting Ottawa Hills Green Bears, Last season, they were 26-7 and seven overall. They finished undefeated in the TAC Conference. They graduated 14 seniors from last year's team. They reached the Division Three Regional Finals last year. They fell to the eventual state runner-up, Milan Edison, by a score of 3-1. to one. Coming in today, Green Bears are hitting 338 as a team, have an overall ERA of 3.37. Sebastian Stevens will be the arm the Rams will face tonight. The lefty, 40 and a third innings pitched. He's allowed 30 hits. Has an ERA of 2.40. He struck out 66 and walked 25. A.J. George leads the Green Bears at the plate. 28 runs batted in. Batting average of 389. Jackson Snyder, 20 RBIs. 363 average. Anthony Aducci, 407. 13 runs batted in. Reddick Pillarelli, 28 steals and a 3.49 average. Otto Hills is coached by 43 years at one school, Chris Hardman. So Coach Hardman leads the Green Bears 43 years as the head coach at Ottawa Hills. This is by Scott Pillarelli, Sam Abbott, Greg Whetstone, Nick Whetstone, Nick DeMarco, and Greg Neuensdorf. Superintendent at Ottawa Hills is Adam Finsky. Principal is Ben McMurray. Athletic Director is Tamara Telmage. Ottawa Hills colors is spring green and white. It's similar to Delta, almost identical in every color and uniform design that they have. They are from the TAC, the Toledo Area Athletic Conference. They are Division Three. They come in with an enrollment of 145 boys and 114 girls. Rams are coached by head coach Brent Renouette. BR, 23 seasons here at Tenora. His Tenora overall record is 407 and 179. His career mark is 455 and 204. Picked up his career win 400 back on May 1st of 2021 here versus Patrick Henry. And a couple weeks ago, here on May 4th versus Ottaville, he picked up career win 400 in a Tenora uniform. BR is assisted by Chuck Carey, Reed Anders, and Eric Tipton. Four final four appearances for the Rams, all four consecutive, 2011, 12, 13, and 14. One state title, that was in 2014. That came courtesy of Clay Pittman driving home E.J. Kissel with the winning run in the bottom of the seventh inning in that victory versus Newark Catholic. Rams have 10 GMC titles under the Tulaja BR, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17, 18, 19, 21, and last season, 2022, as we said earlier. This is the first time since 2016 the Rams have not been atop the GMC standings. Superintendent at Northeastern Local Schools is Nicole Wells. Your principal is Alex Nafziger. Athletic Director, Mr. Craig Rudder, whose tenure is winding down here. Coach Rudder, June 30th is his last day before Jake Essig takes over for Coach Rudder. So Jake stopped up last week, or actually it's earlier this week, so Jake possibly could be up here again today. Rams trainer is Emily Volmar. Tenora's colors is hunter green and white. It's a much darker green than the spring green. Rams are Division Three. They have 147 boys and 127 girls for their enrollment. So wherever you are and however you may be listening or watching, thanks for tuning in to tonight's contest. Coming up live here from Tenora High School's Groove Field is the Tenora Rams taking on the Ottawa Hills Green Bears in the sectional final. Your studio tonight, broadcast studio, is brought to you by the Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon that's located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. In-game scoreboard sponsor is the Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker. Pre-game, brought to you by Signs Excavating. Video sponsor, brought to you by Bat and Stevens Body Shop that's in Jewel, Ohio. Your stats, Mr. Jim Gares and BSN Sports. 
post-game show, Tim Bidlack at Bidlack Insurance and Investments. Player of the game in a Rams win brought to you by Higby Embroidery. Uniforms tonight. Ottawa Hills wearing the blacks with the spring green numbers and the white trim for Tenora. They're in the hunter green tops with the white numbers and lettering in the black trim. David Frank weather forecast here. Overcast, to say the least. We're expecting rain around the 5 or 5, 7, 7.30 time frame. Ran into a little sprinkles on the way here about quarter till 4. So far, no rain actually here at Tenor High School. It is 81 sticky degrees at Groove Field here. Stay tuned. Coming up, we'll have the lineups right after this from BSN Sports. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-8940. Back at Groove Field, looking at the starters for Ottawa Hills, Anthony Aducci leads off. He will be at second base. Reddick Pellerarli, which I'm going to butcher that throughout the game. He bats second and plays in right field. A.J. George will bat third and be in center field. Sebastian Stevens will be on the mound. He is hitting in the cleanup spot. Jackson Snyder batting fifth at third base. Luke Nepper batting sixth and playing in left field. Your DH is Nash Barnes. Jack Eidenier is hitting eighth and playing shortstop. And Brady Larson is behind the plate for the Green Bears. For Tenora, leading off, playing in left field is Aiden Mosier. Batting second at shortstop is Caden Radzik. Batting third, behind the plate, Dalton Wolfram. Any cleanup at third base is Taryn Ward. Batting fifth in right field is Luke Harris. Batting sixth and at first base is Hunter Bosselman. Batting seventh at second base is Eli Plossman. Your DH in the eighth spot is B.J. Morlock. He's hitting for the pitcher Corbin Castile. And Grady Gusweiler hitting ninth. And Grady will be in center field. Looking at the starters as we're yet to have the meeting between the Two coaches at the plate. Umpires heading out there to home plate. Waiting for Coach Hardman to join BR. Like we uh, About 49 years of... 59. 59 years of coaching out there. Close to 63. Six decades of service out there at home plate. <laughs> That's hard. To, this is amazing. Sebastian Stevens, the starter. 40 in the third innings. He's appeared in eight games. He started six. He's allowed 30 hits, 15 runs, 14 earned runs, has an ERA of 2.43, struck out 66 batters in those 40 in the third innings, and he has walked 25 for the Rams. Corbin Castile will be on the mound. Six and two for Corbin. ERA for Corbin is 129. 43 in the third innings pitch for Corbin. He's allowed 19 runs, eight earned runs, 43 hits, struck out 12, and he's walked 43 batters. Corbin's last two starts is just uh, fantastic numbers for Corbin, which I wrote that down, and now I can't seem to find it for whatever reason. Two wins, 14 innings pitched, has not allowed an earned run in his last two starts. Just seven hits. He struck out 12, and he has walked just two batters. Last year, Corbin appeared in two games, had a record of 1-0. He just pitched seven in the third innings. ERA is .96. He allowed one run. That was earned last year. He walked two, and he struck out five. So that just goes to show you um, off-season work for Corbin Castile. Uh, the fantastic senior season he has from basically pitching in two games Started one, came in relief of another, and he 
goes from pitching two games to the anchor of the Ram staff at 6-2 and two and starting the sectional finals game here. We're going to take a break. And while we still have the meeting coming up, we'll have the playing of the National Anthem right after this from one Indian Pawn Shop. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call 419-784-9880 or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com or visit their facebook page wooden indian pawn and gun your locally owned pawn specialists say go rams the law office of wiener hill weber and stanley is a full service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance and all of northwest ohio since 1965 their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity advocacy and understanding at wiener hill weber and stanley we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs we offer high quality legal work and personal client service and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support attorneys jim wiener danny hill cam stanley and ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Back at Groove Field. Getting ready for the playing of our national anthem. of our national anthem here at Groove Field. 17-11, Ottawa Hills come in representing the TAC, Cleveland Area Athletic Conference. All the Rams, number one seed, Ottawa Hills is number two seed. The Rams come in at 19-5, representing the Green Medals Conference. Open the rain holds off here at Groove Field. Last I checked, it was supposed to arrive about 7 to 7.30. The Rams take the field. Corbin Castile on the mound. Don Wolfram behind the plate. Hunter Bosselman at first. Eli Plasman's at second. Caden Radzik's at short. Karen Ward at third. Rams outfield. Aiden Mosier in left. Grady Gusweiler in center. Luke Harris is in right. B.J. Morlock will be your D.H. He is hitting four. Corbin Castile. Last year, as we said, the Golden Bears with a 4-0 victory over Tenora. That was on May 28th. That was in the district finals. Rams just knocked off Archibald and DJ Newman. <laughs> Speaking of DJ, he had a heck of a night last night. It's like the modern-day collegiate Otani. Picked up the win, went eight innings, struck out eight, and was four for four at the plate. So DJ Newman doing great things for Bowling Green. But last year, Ottawa Hills, the... Green Bears knocked off Tenora 4-0. The only two hits were off the bat of Nolan Schaefer last year, the Rams' leadoff hitter. Nolan actually pitched a great game 
As a matter of fact, that game was very tight. Going into the fifth inning, it was one nothing, Ottawa Hills, and Ottawa Hills, I think, got the benefit of a call or two at the plate, and it kind of broke open the game there in the fifth to go on to a four nothing victory over Tenora. Sebastian Stevens, he started five innings, or went five innings last year, did not allow a run, struck out eight, walked two, and just said just those two hits off the bat of Nolan Schaefer. Anthony Aducci will be the first batter. Aducci. Pillararly and George, AJ George, will be your first three batters. Aducci, Pillarelli, and George. Aducci playing at second base, 407. 13 runs batted in, and eight stolen bases. 102 steals as a team for Ottawa Hills. Castile winds it up. First pitch. Just a bit high. First pitch right at 5 o'clock here at Group Field. Temperatures cool off a couple degrees. It's 79 degrees. Castillo gets the sign. 1-0 pitch. Strike called. One ball, one strike. Count to Aducci. Castillo winds it up. Breaking ball, outside corner, strike two called. Uh, if Corbin's going to get that corner, it's going to be great. Castillo's one, two, two, Anthony Aducci. Ground ball to Terran Ward, a third. Ward scoops it up, long throw over, in time to get Aducci for the first out. Five, three on the put out. Now batting the right fielder, number two, Reddick Pillarelli. Reddick Pillarelli steps in, the number two hitter playing in right field. 349, 17 RBIs, 25 stolen bases. Bats from the left side. Castillo gets the sign. First pitch to Pillarelli. Strike. No, it's a ball. Ball high. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, whether you're watching for the first time. Or you're a long-time watcher. We appreciate you here on Tenor Rams Live. Keith Brown solo. 1-0 pitch. Inside it hits. Pillarelli, he's going to trot down the first base after being hit by the pitch. So the first runner to reach is via hit by pitch. For those of you that Up to the plate, keep score of that stuff. The center fielder, A.J. George. A.J. George. He's actually headed to Columbia for a football scholarship. 389. 28 runs batted in and 10 stolen bases. He's playing in center field. So A.J. George heading to Columbia in the upcoming fall. Long look in. 25 steals for Pillarari at first base throw over. He's back with the head first dive. Pillarelli, huge lead over there at first. Castillo, long look in. Throw over. Oh. Ball gets away from Bosselman, heads to the fence. Pillarelli hits second. Holds on there, throw comes in, cut off by Radzik. So on the throw over, air on the throw, advances Pillarelli to second. It's all over that when the Rams played Archibald earlier this week. And it did not turn out well. Come on, try some here, AJ. AJ George at the plate, bats from the right side. 389 for George. Castillo comes set, looks back at the runner at second. Pitch, breaking ball, inside corner for a strike. Castillo, six and two on the season, was the player of the week. Division three player of the week for the Prep Baseball Ohio. That's quite the honor. That's a heck of a two starts there for Corbin. 0-1 pitch for Castillo, breaking ball, hits. George on the elbow. George made no attempt to get out of the way, just stood there and let it hit him. So back-to-back -back players have been hit by a pitch. Pillarelli is at second, and George is at first. Number four hitter, Sebastian Stevens, steps in. Stevens will be on the mound. He bats from the left side at 356, has a homer, and 14 runs batted in. Timeout as BR is going to go out there and have a conversation with his starter, Corbin Castile. 
making sure the infield knows what they're going to do. Actually, Coach Fairchild did this exact same thing in the softball game on Wednesday and instructed the girls what to do. And a couple of pitches later, they hit a ground ball back to Skyly Zolman. And they turned a double play to end the game. So let's hope for the same result here for the Tenora Rams. Two runners on, no, or one out, as De uh, Sebastian Stevens steps in. Castillo from the set position, long look in. Still looking, looks over at the runner, gets a sign from Dalton Wolfram. Pitch to the plate, breaking ball, stays a bit high. A stiff breeze blowing out to straightaway center field, probably about 12 to 15 miles per hour. One of the stronger winds we've had here this month at Sonora. And pretty quiet. 1-0 pitch coming to Stevens. Drilled foul right side. Harris giving chase in foul territory, makes a running catch for the second out. Nice catch by Luke. Runners tag up, but that's a huge out there. Stevens drives it deep. Right field. Harris, long run, put it away. The runners do tag up. Pillarelli down to third. A.J. George down to second, but out number two. Harris tracks that down in deep foul territory. In right field. Jackson Snyder, the number five hitter, steps in. 363, 20 RBIs for Jackson Snyder as the skies get darker and darker here. Castillo comes set. Runners lead from second and third for Ottawa Hills. Pitch. Swung on. Fly ball. Right field. Giving chases. Harris in foul territory. Puts it away. Luke Harris again on his horse. Pulls that down. About a foot in foul territory to retire. Ottawa Hills. Two big, huge outs there. Off the on right arm of Castillo in the legs of Luke Harris in the inning. No runs for Ottawa Hills. No hits, at least official hits. They were hit-wise and no errors. Two left on. That's a huge jolt right there for the Rams. Heading to the bottom of the first inning on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Ottawa Hills nothing, and the Tenora Rams are coming to bat. The Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters is a proud sponsor of Tenora Sports and Tenora Rams Live. The Athletic Boosters is a nonprofit organization that supports Tenora athletes, coaches, and athletic facilities. The Boosters' support is shown in many ways, including volunteering time, raising money, and contributing funds to better enhance the team or the organization's performance. Yearly and lifetime memberships are available. Visit them on Facebook at Tenora Athletic Boosters. Bottom of the second we go. Two huge outs. That, was, that really was. That's, a, that's a, at least an early jolt in the arm for the entire Rams. On the mound is Sebastian Stevens. Brady Larson is behind the plate. At first base for the Green Bears is Jason Breed. Anthony Aducci is at second. Jack Eidenauer is at short. Jackson Snyder is at third. Luke Depper is in left. A.J. George is in center. And Reddick Pillarelli is in right field. Stevens, we said, 40 in the third innings pitch. Started six games, allowed 30 hits, 15 runs, 14 earned runs, 2.43 ERA, 66 strikeouts, 25 walks. He's going to face Mosier, Radzik, and Wolfram. First pitch to Mosier. Strike called. Last year, Stevens got the win in the district finals. Stevens winds and fires first pitch. Her second pitch is fouled off. One ball and one strike to the Rams leadoff hitter. Aiden Mosier. Mosier, 294, has 17 walks and 17 stolen bases. Rams as a team, 85 steals. 0-2 pitch. Little tapper at the plate. Foul. Mosier stays alive. No balls and two strikes. Trying to refresh our radar here because they said like it gets darker by the minute. Rain is in Fort Wayne. It's right at the border right now, it looks like. Mosier taps it on the infield. Shortstop throws over. Eidenauer with a rocket. Gets Mosier by a half a step. 
6-3 on the putout to retire Mosier. It's going to bring up Caden Radzik. Ram shortstop, 351 with 23 RBIs. Caden with 19 steals. A couple steals behind the team leader, Dalton Wolfram. Pitch to Radzik. Strike called. Radzik was 0 for 2 last year versus Sebastian Stevens and struck out twice. Which is a ball, one ball, one strike, one out. Base is empty, bottom of the first inning, no score. Although two balls and a strike to Radzik. Radzik also had a sacrifice last year, or last year, yeah, in last year's game. And of course, hit by a pitch. <laughs> Held off. Count evens. Two balls, two strikes, one out. No score. Bottom of the first inning. Ottawa Hills threatened in the first. And two huge outs in right field by Luke Harris. Both foul balls chasing him into foul territory. Radzik, one and two. He held back. Count goes full to Caden as the ball hits to the backstop. Three balls and two strikes. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. Thanks to the Harrises. The appeal down to first base, he says Radzik held a swing, which I didn't honestly think was that close. But they did appeal, and the first base umpire said he did check a swing. Stevens on the mound, payoff pitch coming. Low ball for Radzik with a one-out walk, heads down to first base. Going to bring up Dalton Wolfram. Wolfram, the Rams catcher, leads the team in with a 421 average, has 26 RBIs and 23 stolen bases. Caden with those 19 steals, always a threat to go. The lefty Stevens fires, Wolfram swings and misses. Strike one winner advances to Saturday at Defiance High School to take on the winner. Actually, there was two upsets. We'll get to those in here in a second. Stevens throws over to first base. Radzik's back. Winner of Genoa and Hicksville. Genoa upset Liberty Center, who was the five seed. And Hicksville upset the number four seed, Lake High School. Pitch. His low ball gets away. That allows Radzik to get down to second. Throw down is not in time. So Radzik goes down to second on the wild pitch. Rams have a runner in scoring position with one out. Dalton Wolfram at the plate. One ball and one strike is the count to Dalton. One one pitch coming to Dalton Wolfram. Swung and miss. Strike two. The bad thing is, if it does rain, even though we have turf, if it's a lengthy rain, both teams possibly could lose their starters. Do you want your Kid going back out there after throwing 60, 70 pitches. Low, ball two, two balls and a strike. <laughs> two, two pitch coming. Razik leads away from second with one out. Stevens comes set. Here comes the pitch. Wolfram fouls it back. And if it does rain, it looks like the rain will stay with us for quite some time. So if we get. One out One out a little ways through this game, and we got to come back tomorrow. Not sure that your starters will be able to come back. 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball tap foul into the Rams' dugout. Wolfram gets, gets enough of it to stay alive. Two balls and two strikes. Radzik on that first base. Drew a one out walk. Stevens comes set. His 2-2 pitch to Dalton Wolfram. Outside corner. Strike three called. Wolfram not happy about that. And that was the extreme outside corner for the second out. Taryn Ward is going to step in. The Rams third baseman. 349 with 15 runs batted in. Taryn. Been playing great the last couple of weeks. Same thing last year. Last year, Karen came on the last month or so and was one of the hotter hitters. Average up to 349. Stevens steps off, chases Radzik back to second. With two outs, Radzik will be gone at the crack of the bat. Scoreless here in the bottom of the first inning. Sectional finals. Winner goes home, or winner goes to defiance. Loser goes home. There goes Radzik. Throw down to third. 
in time. Radzik is caught stealing for the third out. So Ward will be at the plate. Next inning, in the inning for the Rams, no runs, no hits, no errors, and in the end, nobody on base. So after an inning of play here at Groove Field at Tenora High School, no score through one on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiance Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. Back here at Groove Field, as we're, I'm confusing myself and everybody up here with me, actually the winner will play Thursday the 25th at 2 o'clock. The winner of this game will move on to play the winner of Genoa and Hicksville, who both of those winners were the lower seeds and came through with victories. Four, Ottawa Hills, the Green Bears, will send up six, seven, and eight. Nepper, Barnes, and Eitner to face Corbin Castile. First pitch is a strike. Castile got out of a big jam in the first inning. Two fly balls to right field in foul territory. Snagged by Luke Harris. 0-1 pitch, breaking ball. High, one ball and one strike. That second out, Luke ran a half a mile to grab that. Base is empty, no score. Top of the second inning, Castile fires. Strike called on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes to the number six hitter, Luke Nepper. Castile works out of the windup now. One, two pitch. Outside. Just missed. <laughs> Dalton's like, hey, you called me out on that pitch when I was up. Well, that was actually was a little bit more outside, but Dalton wasn't happy when he was called out. They had a little conversation when Dalton went back to the play. Two, two pitch. Breaking ball. Swung on. Hit to Ward at third. Ward throw over just in time to get Nepper. 5-3, Ward tried to gather himself, put a little baby hop in there, and that was a little bit closer than what I think everybody thought. Nice hustle by Luke Nepper down the line. Stepping in, the DH, Nash Barnes, the number seven hitter. 339 for Barnes, has six RBIs and eight stolen bases. Strike, goal. Castile's 0-1 to Barnes, breaking ball, just misses. It must have been a little bit low, got the plate. The count evens, one ball, one strike, one out here in the top of the second. No score, Otto Hills at the plate. Castile pitches in the center of the pitching rubber. 1-1 one, one pitch, strike two on the outside corner. One, two, pitch. Just a, that's high and away. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. To Nash Barnes. Winds it up. Castillo fires. Breaking ball. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Barnes. First strikeout for Castile. It's going to bring up Jack Eidner. Up to the plate, number 20, the shortstop, Jack Eidner. 246 with 10 runs batted in. First pitch to Eidner, strike one. He's headed to Siena Heights for baseball next year, or yes, this fall. 
upcoming fall. Oh, one pitch to Eidner. Strike two call on the outside corner. Castillo's shaving that corner on the outside. On top of the plate He's really right really out. Oh, He's, you know, He's doing both legs. So it's like. Steal long look in. Pitch foul back. I near stays alive. No balls and two strikes to the number eight hitter. The shortstop, Jack Eidner. Steele gets a sign from his battery mate Dalton Wolfram. Wines, fires, tap, foul again. Just stays alive. Castillo hit two batters in the first inning. Green Bears had two on with one out. And Castillo and Luke Harris got the Rams out of that inning. 0-2 pitch from Castillo. Here it comes. Outside. One ball and two strikes. Castillo trying to get Eidner to swing. Go fishing there a little bit. He did not. Corbin's 1-2. That was way outside. Heads to the backstop. Two balls and two strikes. <laughs> nice crowd on hand here. Stands are packed for both sides. 2-2 two -two pitch coming. Hit third base side. Ward up with it. Throws across in time to retire Eidner. 5-3 on the putout. In the inning for the Green Bear. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Bottom of the second we go here at Group Field at Sonora High School. Sectional finals between the Rams and the Ottawa Hill Green Bear. We are scoreless on your drop zone pizza race scoreboard. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Back to Groove Field we go. We are scoreless as the Rams come to bat. For Tenora, 4, 5, and 6. Still at bat will be Terran Ward. Ward was at bat when Caden Radzik tried to steal third base with two outs. I think BR is trying to hope for a throw into left field, which we've seen on several occasions this season. Unfortunately, a dart by catcher Brady Larson, and Razik was out of third, and it wasn't even close. Ward, 349 with 15 runs batted in. First pitch by Sebastian Stevens, outside corner strike call to Terry Ward. Tomorrow, after this pitch, a one pitch, Ward will tap her foul. Terry's down, no balls in, two strikes, will be back at Holland. At Springfield High School, not really at Springfield High School, but the softball complex. Lady Rams take on Eastwood. 0-2 pitch, Ward strikes out, swinging. Karen goes down for the first out. Going to bring up Luke Harris. Harris in right field. 282 on the season for the senior. Luke, first team all GMC as a basketball player. Has 13 runs batted in. First pitch from Stevens to Harris. Just misses. Ball one. Luke also won the three-point shooting contest and the slam dunk contest all the same night over at Hicksville in the All-Star game, basketball-wise. That pitch is a strike. One ball and one strike, one out. Bases empty. Scoreless here in the bottom of the second. Pitch to Luke is high and away. Two balls and a strike. 18 points a game on the hardwood for Luke. Pass. Winter fouled off behind the Rams dugout. Two balls and two strikes. Reset the Ottawa Hills defense again for those tuning in late. 2 2 pitch coming to Luke Harris. Inside just misses. Bastion Stevens on the mound. Brady Larson behind the plate. Jason Breed at first. Aducci at second. 2 3 2 pitch to Harris. Inside ball four. Harris 
Works a one-out walk. Luke heads down to first base. Going to bring up Hunter Bosselman. Jack Eidner at short. Jackson Snyder at third. Nepper, George, and Pillarelli, your outfield for Ottawa Hills. Bosselman bats from the right side. Harris takes the lead. First pitch to Hunter. There's a strike. Bosselman, 13 runs batted in at a 265 average. Pitch gets behind the catcher. He can't find it. Harris hits second. He's big turn by Luke. He hits the brakes and heads back there. So Harris goes down to second on the wild pitch. So Rams again with the runner in the scoring position. Second straight inning with the runner at second base. This time with one out. Count to Boston one as a ball and a strike. Sebastian Stevens nods. Lefties 1-1. One, one. Swung on high pop in the foul territory. First base side and it falls. <laughs> Jason Breed, the first baseman, got over there, kind of twisted and turned himself around into a little bit of a pretzel. And by the time he righted his own ship, he could not find the ball and it fell harmlessly in foul territory. <laughs> Stevens, one, two, pitch coming to Bosselman. Swung on and this strike three. Down goes Bosselman for the second out here in the inning. Third strikeout for Stevens. That's going to bring up Eli Plasman. Eli, 306 with 11 runs batted in for the senior second baseman batting in the seventh spot. Harris leads from second. Pitch outside corner just misses. Ball one. Don't quite hear Coach Rudder down there yet. He's scanning tickets in for everybody showing up today. 1 0 pitch to Plasman is low. Nice block by the Ottawa Hills catcher, Brady Larson. Down to Plasman is 2 0. Harris. Decent lead okay. down there at second. Stevens 2-0 pitch to Plasman. Strike called on the inside corner. Two balls on a strike to Eli. Two outs. No score here in the bottom of the second. Luke Harris with a one-out walk went to second on a wild pitch. Plasman asks for time. He steps out. Plasman back in. He's ready. So is Stevens. Stevens 2-1 pitch. Tapped foul at the plate. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs. Harris at second. Foul tip off the catcher. Where he takes a couple moments, walks out to give the ball to Stevens. Two balls and two strikes. Stevens comes set. 2-2 to Plasman. Swung on and miss on a pitch in the dirt. Breed scoops it up, fires down to first in time to get Eli. Four strikeout for Stevens in the inning for the Rams. Get a runner at second, but stranded there. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We're through two innings of play. Here at Drew Field at Snor High School, we are scoreless on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard as we head to the top of the third. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polished Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polished Salon is a proud supporter of Tadora Rams Live. Back here at Group Field. 
for Ottawa Hills, the number two, uh, number two seed in the Defiance District. Nine, one and two, Brady Larson. Will step in. Actually, Brady Larson's headed to Siena Heights. I think I had it wrong last inning. Larson's headed to Siena Heights, not Jack Iden here. First pitch is a strike. 300 with two RBIs for the catcher, Brady Larson. Steel, Rams senior righty, six and two on the year. Comes set, pitches outside, one ball and one strike. For Corbin, 26 to uh, total pitches with 16 strikes. He's hit two batters. Those are back to back in the first inning. Steals 1 1, breaking ball, one hop right to the shortstop, Radzik. Radzik rifles it across, gets behind the first baseman. Going to be error on the shortstop. So Larson gets on, on the air. Radzik took a little bit longer than what I thought he wanted. Tried to make up for it by rifling the throw over there to first base and in doing so, when he tried to put a little extra mustard on it, it usually winds up short and that's what happened. It skipped Bosselman over there at first. Headed to the fence, but Larson was not able to advance. Top of the lineup, Anthony Aducci steps in. Grounded to Taron Ward at third in the first inning. 407 on the season. Pitch, strike on the outside corner. <laughs> Top of the third, no score. Aducci at the dish, runner at first, throw back over. Larson. He didn't write anything down for him, so he must not really be a threat on the base paths. Doesn't mean he's not going to steal. Just means. Oh, one pitch. Breaking ball, strike called. Castillo quickly had no balls and two strikes to the leadoff hitter, Anthony Aducci. This means it wasn't noteworthy to write down at the time. Castillo comes set, looks at the runner at first. Pitch outside, nice stop by Dalton Wolfram on the backhand. Actually, Larson has 10 steals, so. There's more stolen bases than RBIs. One, two, pitch, runner stays put. Breaking ball way outside. Count evens, two balls and two strikes. Bree still blowing straight away center field. Not quite as strong as it was an inning or so ago. Dark skies to our left. Two, two, pitch. Hit right back through the box for a single. Castillo would have had another foot on his glove. He would have either snagged it or knocked it down. So Aducci gets the first hit of the game for either team. Larson goes down to second. He stops there. So the first two Green Bears have uh, reached. Redick Pillarari steps in. Pillarelli was hit in the first. So Pillarelli could sacrifice here to get the runners at second and third. Castillo comes set and he squares around the bunt. He bunts it right back to Castillo. Castillo looks at third now, throws to first just in time to get the runner. Pillarelli, so Pillarelli does his job, sacrifice, that's the first out. Larson goes down to third, Aducci goes down to second. I think Castillo wanted to go to the third, but Ward couldn't get back to the bag in time. With him playing in, waiting for the bunt, Heron had to turn and burn, and he couldn't get back in time. So second and third with one out. A.J. George steps in. Outside, ball one. George also was hit in the first inning. 389 for George. 28 runs batted in. As we said, he's headed, he's headed to Columbia, the Columbia, on a football scholarship. Steals pitch. Tapped right back to Corbin. They said it's a foul ball. Fouled at the plate. So Ottawa Hills catches a little bit of a break there. George, after a little bit of a stroll, heads outside of the would be dirt. We got turf on the infield here at Group Field at Tenor High School, installed last fall, and then grass outfield. 
One ball, one strike, one out. Runners at second and third. Scoreless here in the top of the inning. The top of inning number three, Castiles. Pitch to George, breaking ball, strike two called. Caught the front of the plate on the outside corner. Castile's up. With the count of one ball and two strikes. Castile comes set. Long look in, gets a sign from Wolfram. There's one, two pitch. Steps off, throws back to second. Out. Oh! Radzik bobbled the ball. I think they had him picked off. The umpire was waiting to see the ball. And once he saw that Caden did not have it in his glove, he waited to make the call. Rams worked a pick, perfect pickoff play there. Just a couple centimeters to the second base side of the bag. They would have had him, or the third base side. Pitched, drilled. Deep left field. Mosier tracks it over by the foul line. Leaps. Can't get it. It's off the wall. One run scores. That's an RBI double for A.J. George. Just missed a home run by about six feet. So George gets an RBI. That scores Larson. Aducci had to hold up to see if the ball was going to be caught. Mosier leaped at the fence. And it hit, I think, halfway up the fence. So the Golden Bears grab a 1-0 lead as the skies continue to get dark here. Sebastian Stevens will step in. Fouled off. Going to intentionally walk Stevens to load him up. So the intentional walk loads the bases for Jackson Snyder. One out. Bases loaded. Gold, or, uh, Green Bears up. One nothing. The steal comes set. Long look in by Corbin. It's one, two, or his first pitch is the ball, ball one. One ball, no strikes, one out to Jackson Snyder. 363 with 20 runs batted in on the season. Corbin's going to work out of the windup with the bases loaded. Gets the sign from Wolfram. Pitch is drilled deep center field. Gus Weiler going back in position. Catches it for the second out. Runner's going to tag up. Scoring from third will be Anthony Aducci for the second run. It's going to be a sacrifice off the bat of Snyder for the second out. Drilled it deep to center. Runners tag up. George went to third. Or actually, just one runner tagged up. George went to third. Snyder stayed at first. Luke Nepper steps in, grounded out to Taryn Ward in the second inning. Two nothing. Ottawa Hills on top. Two outs. Runners at the corners. Castile comes set. Pitch hit second base side. Plasmans throws it over to Radzik to retire the Green Bears. Four six on that putout. But in the inning. Two runs for the Ottawa Hill Green Bear. They do so on two hits, one ram air, and two left on base. We're through two and a half innings here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Ottawa Hills, two, and the Tenora Rams, nothing. We'll be back right after this time out. Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day -day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273 and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy an ice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. 
Back at Groove Field, Rams trail 2-0 as they come to bat in the bottom of the third. 8-9-1, B.J. Morlock, Grady Gusweiler, and the top, Aiden Mosier, your first three batters to face Sebastian Stevens, who has yet to allow a hit through the first two. Morlock, 161 on the season. He's DHing for Corbin Castillo. First pitch just misses for a ball. Sebastian Stevens, 1-0 pitch. Strike called to B.J. Morlock. Stevens, just a junior, still has one more year of high school left. 1-1, outside corner, strike two call to B.J. Morlock. It's been consistent. If you hit that outside, extreme outside corner, you're going to get the call. 1-2 pitch. Tap first base side, first base and up with it. Steps right on the bag as he fields it. Jason Breed retires Gus or Morlock for the first out. It's three unassisted on the put out. It's going to bring up the number nine hitter, center fielder, Grady Gusweiler. Grady, 240 with 15 walks and seven runs. Batted in seven stolen bases on the season. Stevens. First pitch, outside corner strike. Steven's going to hit that all game long. The Rams are going to have a very long Friday evening. Strike two, same exact spot. Steven's throwing darts right now and hitting the bullseye every time. Steven's 0-2 to Gus Weiler. Breaking ball tapped over the head of Steven's. Shortstop comes over, throws just in time to get Grady. Nice play by Jack Eidner to retire Grady. 6-3 on the put out for round number two. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier. Aiden grounded to Eidner as well. In the bottom of inning number one. I got one. I'm going to get one. I'll get one. Steven winds and fires. Pitch just misses. Ball one. Base is empty. Two outs. No, he went home, but this was for Dale. Oh. Bottom of the third inning. Golden Bears with a 2 nothing lead. Yeah, Dale decides. 1 0 pitch. Strike called. One ball and one strike. Breaking ball. Strike two called. Lefty Stevens is just in one of those grooves. He is in the zone. One, two, pitch. Fouled off the catcher's mask. That sounds like that. Hit it hard. Hit the umpire's mask. A good thing could be a good thing. Hey there, boys. There's Coach Rudder. I hear him down there. His ticket scanning duties are over. One, two, pitch coming to Mosier. Just misses on the outside corner. Two balls and two strikes to Mosier. <laughs> Stevens pitch. Tap foul first base side for Stevens. That was his 50th pitch. He's got 31 strikes. I can actually remember him throwing 19 balls. Got four strikeouts as yet, or he's walked two. And has yet to allow a hit. And how the rains are has not started yet is beyond me. 2-2 two, two pitch to Mosier. Fouled off third base side. If I was mowing my grass, the rains would have started about 10 minutes ago. That's the way it works. Cheryl says it's raining near Eden right now. Thank you, Cheryl. 2-2 two, two pitch coming to Mosier. Breaking ball hits second base side. Anthony Aducci scoops it up forward to Reed to retire Mosier. 4 3 on the put out. In the inning, the Rams again go quickly. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. Just one base runner so far for the Rams. Actually, two. Radzik and Harris both walk. So, heading to the top of the fourth inning here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. It is the Ottawa Hills Big Green. The Big Green. Green Bear. Ottawa Hills Green Bear 2 and the Tenora Rams nothing. Again, Ottawa Hills and Ottaville kind of confused. They both had the same colors and same. Anyways, it's 2 nothing as we head to the top of the fourth on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. 
Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Nice Barnes steps in to start the top of the fourth inning. First pitch to Barnes is a strike. 7-8-9 for the Green Bears. Barnes, Eidner, and Larson to face Corbin Castillo. Pitch is a little bit high. Count evens at a ball and a strike for Corbin. He's got 44 pitches and 28 strikes, so Corbin's actually is in the zone as well. Just defense kind of let him down there last inning. Swung on and missed by Barnes. One ball and two strikes. Castillo winds it up as one two pitch. Swung on, tapped third base side. Ward up with it. Throws over. Throws wide. Pulls Bosselman off the bag. Bosselman says he puts a tag on the runner coming by. He did. He tagged him. He tagged him. Which it looked like he did. But another error for the Rams. High throw. E5 will put Barnes on at first. Second inning with an error. BR is going to come out and talk to the field umpire. And he was going to come down and ask the home plate umpire, who had, I think, a better view. Looked like he tagged them on the way by before he hit the bag. Come on, he tagged him. Out. Yep. So they're going to reverse that call. So we're going to take the air off the board. We're going to take Barnes off first base, and we're going to be a 5-3 put out. That's a excellent job of the umpires getting together to reverse that call because Barnes was clearly out. Throw Drew Bosselman off the bag. Hunter caught it and tagged Barnes as he was in motion to step on the bag. Jack Eidner steps in. First pitch to him is a ball. I near 246. On the season. Castillo's pitch just misses outside. Two balls and no strikes. Right near 0 for 1. Yeah. 2-0 pitch, strike on the outside corner by Corbin Castillo. Two balls and a strike, one out, base is empty. Top of the fourth inning. Rams trail 2-0 here in the sectional finals. Castillo's 2-1, strike call on the outside corner. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Steele gets a sign from Wolfram. Winds it up. 2-2 pitch. Breaking balls. Tap third base side. Ward up with it. Throws over. In time. Nice stretch by Bosselman over there to retire. Hide near. Karen Ward playing a great third base over there. Up to the plate, number five. One, two, three. Five put out so far at third base for Ward. Going to bring up the number nine hitter, the catcher, Brady Larson. Brady's headed to Sienna Heights in the fall. Reached on Aaron scored. Last inning in the third. First pitch to him was a strike. That one is drilled just over the head of Radzik. Just misses it into left center field for a little blue pit. So Larson's on with a two-out single. Two runs, three hits, no errors for Ottawa Hills for Tenora. No runs, no hits, and two huge errors. Top of the lineup, Anthony Aducci steps in. He singled and scored last inning. Ten stolen bases for Larson. Definitely a threat to go down there at first. 
Castile's come set. Pitch is a strike to the leadoff hitter, Aducci, batting 407. Coming in, he's one for two with that single and run scored. Pillarelli on deck. Reddick Pillarelli, that is. No balls, one strike. Two outs. Here's the pitch. Check swing outside corners. Called a strike regardless. No balls and two strikes. Two outs to Anthony Aducci. Runner at first. Brady Larson leads away. Steele comes set. Just a sign from Wolfram. Pitch. Fouled right back this way. Count stays. No balls and two strikes. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here on Snow Rams Live. Keith Brown and Kaylee. Kaylee Runk will be with you tomorrow. Broadcast the Lady Rams district semifinal game. Or district final game. 0-2 pitch coming to Aducci. Check swing. There goes the runner down to second. And a nice throw by Wolfram. Little delayed steal there by Larson. Wolfram with a just a dart down there to get Larson on the caught stealing. So that's the third out. Aducci will be at the plate when we start the fifth inning. So after three and a half innings here at Group Field at Sonora High School, it is Ottawa Hills 2 and the Sonora Rams nothing. We'll be back after this time out. The Ed Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Batten Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Matt and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Back at Group Field, Rams still looking for their first hit. Trail by a score of 2-0. Two runs, three hits, airless ball for Ottawa Hills. And for the Rams, no runs, no hits. And one air, two airs actually for Tenora. Looking at the radar, right on the cusp of the rain like I said I think if it starts raining hopefully we can play through a light rain because it's not going to stop for a long long time for the Rams 2, 3, and 4 to face Sebastian Stevens Caden Radzik, Dalton Wolfram and Taryn Ward to face Stevens as we said Stevens has been in the zone here tonight. 53 pitches, 34 strikes. Struck out four and walked two. Rams have two base runners. Caden Radzik in the first, who got thrown out at third. And then Luke Harris drew a walk in the second. First pitch to Caden is a ball. If we were to field the headlights, they would have been turned on a long time ago. <laughs> but at first base side, Stevens off the mound, grabs it. Nice idea by Caden, but even better reaction out there by Sebastian Stevens to retire Radzik. 1-3 on the putout to start the fourth inning. Dal Wolfram, the Rams catcher. First team GMC. Caden was second team, by the way. All GMC this week. Caden with a bunt attempt, grounded out. Now Dalton Wolfram steps in. Dalton was first team all GMC. Dalton struck out looking his first plate appearance. And that pitch, a little bit low, heads to the backstop for ball one. Thank you, Pittsburgh Sioux, for watching as always, and Cheryl and everybody else from Ottawa Hills and Sonora. We appreciate joining us on this Friday evening. Pitch to Dalton's outside. Two balls and no strikes. Winner advances to defiance. 2-0 pitch. Strike call. Two balls and a strike. Stevens, 2-1 coming to Dalton Wolfram. That's outside. Three balls. 
and a strike. Bases empty, one out here in the bottom of inning number four. Pitches fouled off. Three balls and two strikes to the Rams catcher, Dalton Wolfram. On deck, the cleanup hitter, Taryn Ward. Otto Hills got here by beating Delta 7 0. Pitch to Dalton, swung on and missed. Strike three. Wolfram goes down on strikes. Gonna bring up Taryn Ward. Ward's been busy at the defensive side with five putouts so far. At the plate, he is 0 for 1, struck out in the second. Stevens, first pitch to Ward. There's a bit outside, ball one. One-zero -oh pitch, strike called. Really, there's only three players that saw Stevens last year. One-one pitch, low ball two. That was the Ram shortstop, Caden Radzik, center fielder Grady Gusweiler, and Dalton Wolfram got a pitch hit, but I don't think he's faced Stevens. Breaking ball up and away, three balls and then one strike. So back-to-back -back hitters have gone three to one versus Stevens. Step out if you have to. Three one to Ward. Oh, yeah. Strike on the outside corner. Ward steps out, gets back in. Three two coming for him. Stevens. Check swing. Strike three called. A peel. And the first base umpire says he went around, which he did. Back-to-back oh -back strikeouts in the Rams' fourth inning. So in the inning for Tenora, no runs, no hits, no Ottawa Hills errors, and the Rams do not leave anybody on base. Rams have had this one left on base. So far still searching for their first hit. Heading to the top of the fifth inning. Here on your drop zone, Pizzeria scoreboard, it's Ottawa Hills 2 and the Tenor Rams, nothing. Getting better together is our goal for you and your family at Fairchild Family Chiropractic. Here, we are focused on getting our patients to achieve long-term wellness just beyond short-term symptom relief. At Fairchild Family Chiropractic, we do this by working closely with you and personalizing each treatment plan. Now open and accepting new patients. Come see Dr. A.J. Fairchild at 100 Stadium Drive. Call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. Fairchild, a proud Tenora alum says go Rams. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Top of the fifth we go to Groove Field. Ottawa Hills with two runs in the third have a two nothing lead over the number one seed, the Tenora Rams. Ottawa Hills number, or number two seed. They come in at 17-11, Rams 19-5. So still would be the top of the lineup. Aducci was at the plate when Larson was thrown out to win the fourth. So Aducci, 407 on the season. He singled and scored in the third. Pitch. Swung on, fouled back out of play. Strike one. For Castillo, pitch four innings allowed three hits, two runs. Those are both unearned. Struck out one and walked one. Breaking ball, strike, call on the inside corner. Castillo ahead of Aducci, no balls and two strikes. Beautiful pitch by Corbin. 0-2. Or Castillo, he winds it up, fires outside. One ball and two strikes. I say for those of you kids listening and you don't actually get to play instead of just quitting. I'll continue my story here in a second. One, two, pitch coming. Fouled off. First base side. Bosselman giving chase. Here comes Harris in that falls about five feet away from both of them. But last year, Corbin only pitched in seven in the third innings at the varsity level as a junior. And he came back his senior year, put in the offseason work, and he is starting the sectional final and was the Division Three Player of the Week in all of Ohio, mind you, in the prep baseball uh, website that does a fantastic job for high school sports. One, two, pitch. Wide shot right at Radzik for the first out. Six unassisted. But Castillo 
just two outings last year, started the game and came in relief of another. Seven in the third innings last year for Corbin. This year, six and two, 43 innings, and he's starting the sectional finals. So don't quit, work harder. <laughs> Pitch inside, hits the number two hitter, Pillarelli, in the back of the leg. So, Reddick Pillarelli down to first base. It's the third hitter that Castile has hit. They actually don't track hit by pitches, but the pitcher that is. Don't bring up the number three hitter, A.J. George. George delivered the blast so far. There's a difference in this game. Deep fly ball to left field. Mosier went to the fence, leaped, hit halfway up. Throw over. Back safely is Clarelli. He's got 25 stolen bases. Reddick does. George was hit by a pitch in the first and said doubled in the third. 389 for George. 28 runs batted in, 10 steals. Breaking ball, outside corner for a strike. Well, I said his other two times, so I feel like the kid gets, <laughs> he puts the work in, he's gonna get the credit. He's headed to Columbia for football. I mean, you head to Columbia. <laughs> We're talking the Ivy League Columbia, not like uh, like a s small school in Ohio Columbia, throw over to first base. Plurelli back safely, so kudos to A.J. George for putting the work in and he's headed to Columbia. Pitch to George, check swing, catches the outside corner, strike two. Castillo ahead of George, no balls and two strikes, one out, runner at first, two nothing, Ottawa Hills as they bat in the top of the fifth. Castillo comes set, breaking ball, hit in between Ward and Radzik into left field. Mosier comes in to get it. Oh, A.J. George is on at first. Pillarelli stops at second. The cleanup hitter, the pitcher, Sebastian Stevens. Stevens is officially 0 for 1. He was intentionally walked his last plate appearance. Bats from the left side. 356 for Stevens. Has a homer in 14. Runs batted in. Runners lead from first and second. Rams infield is in at the corners. Pitch tap just outside the bag at first. Stevens, we said, just a junior. Had a heck of a season last year as a sophomore. On the mound and at the plate. Basically standing on the batter's box line. He's like, when he swings through his... Arms have to be on the other side of the plate, honestly. Chokes up on the bat about an inch. As for time, he steps out. So Stevens is as close as a plate as you can actually get. Runners lead. 0-1 pitch coming from Castile. He comes set. Looks at the runners. Here it comes. Hit first base side. Possible up with it. He's going to run to the bag and touch it for the second out. So Stevens is retired. Three unassisted on the ground out. Runners move up. Pillarelli down to third. And A.J. George down to second. Jackson Snyder, 0 for 2, steps in. Snyder's number five hitter. He's playing at third base. Two outs now. BR is going to put him on. So they're going to intentionally walk Snyder. So he goes down. To first base to load him up. Luke Nepper steps in, the number six hitter. Left fielder Nepper is 0 for 2. Nepper 378 with 18 RBIs on the season. Castillo's going to work out of the set position with the bases loaded. First pitch is outside. Wolfram with the backhand save in the left hand batter's box. Corbin did this once before, then the next pitch he's gonna work he's gonna work out of the windup on the second pitch. Did that last Friday as well. First pitch was out of the set position, the second pitch comes out of the windup. 
Long look in, Castillo comes set. Pitch, strike, call on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Two outs, bases loaded here at the top of the fifth. Rams can ill afford to give up any more runs. Already trailing 2 nothing. They have yet to have a hit. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Nepper. Steal long look in, gets it. Pitch coming outside to the backstop, it goes. Wolfram runs back there, throw to the plate, not in time, the throw gets away. Nice backup by Hunter Bosselman, so Pillarelli scores the third run on the wild pitch. Runners move up, A.J. George down to third, and Jackson Snyder to first. Two balls and one strike is the count to Nepper. Nash Barnes on deck. So a wild pitch results in run number three. Gonna work out of the set position again. 2-1 pitch coming. Breaking ball. Fouled off first base side out of play. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runners at second and third for Ottawa Hills. They now lead 3-0 here in these sectional finals. Rain has held off so far, winds died down considerably. Flag still blowing, not close to what it was through the first couple innings. 2-2 pitch coming to Nepper. Swung on, fouled off, first base side. That goes out of play. Corbin looks in, gets a sign from Dalton Wolfram. Comes set. Runners take their lead from first and second. Or second and third. Breaking ball stays high. Count goes full. Three and two. To Luke Nepper. Nash Barnes awaits on deck. He's hitting for the first baseman, smart. Jason Breed. Steals 3-2. Yeah, house back here. <laughs> Drilled right at Mosier. Comes in, dies, bold. Must have trapped it. That's going to score two. Mosier dove. Couldn't actually see the ball for a couple seconds. Time he popped up, I don't know that he ever had it. Ball was behind him, so two more runs for Ottawa Hills. George scores. Snyder scores. Now batting number 12, Nash Barnes. Nepper's on a second with those two RBIs on the double. Mosier, it was a line shot. Mosier come running in, dove. He said, I don't know if he had the ball in his glove or not. He rolled over and he looked around and picked up the ball behind him. So he, whether he had it or not, I'm not sure. He just didn't catch it enough for him to see it. So it's 5 0 Ottawa Hills here at the top of the fifth. Dash Barnes. First pitch to him is outside. Ball one. Lady Rams were down 5 0. About the same time. They came back and scored seven. Pitch outside corner, strike one. Runner at second, two outs. Luke Nepper leads away. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Nash Barnes. Corbin Castile comes set. Here it comes. Check swing. Pitch stays outside. Two balls and a strike. Karen Ward in where the cut of the grass would be here on the artificial surface at Groove Field. Two balls and a strike. Here comes Castile's pitch. Way outside, ball three. <laughs> Corbin's 3-1 coming to Barnes. Hammer deep center field. Grady's going back, still going back. Looks up, it's gone. Nash Barnes with the
with a two-run shot to straightaway center field. Gives Ottawa Hills a seven. Nothing lead. Epper scores. Here comes Barnes. Or does it ground rule double? I guess it was a ground rule double. So it wasn't a home run. It was a double. I can't really see here. So it's, uh, Barnes is at second with a double, not a home run. Jack Jack near to the plate. Pitch is a strike on the outside corner. There we go. Good thing for whiteout. Sometimes it works, other times it just makes more of a mess of your scorebook. Six nothing in the top of the fifth. Steals pitch. Hammered center field. Gus Weiler. Moves over a couple steps and puts it away for the third out. So Widener with the line shot right at the center fielder, Grady Gusweiler. That ends the inning. In the inning for Ottawa Hills. Score four runs here in the top of the fifth. They do so on three hits. And for Sonora, no runs. And they left one on base. We're going to head to the bottom of the fifth inning here at Group Field with the Ottawa Hills Green Bear leaving, leading the Tenor Rams by a score of 6 0. We'll be back right after this here on Tenor Rams Live. Getting better together is our goal for you and your family at Fairchild Family Chiropractic. Here, we are focused on getting our patients to achieve long-term wellness just beyond short-term symptom relief. At Fairchild Family Chiropractic, we do this by working closely with you and personalizing each treatment plan. Now open and accepting new patients. Come see Dr. AJ Fairchild at 100 Stadium Drive. Call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. Fairchild, a proud Tenora alum says go Rams back here at Groove Field bottom of the fifth we go 6-0 Ottawa Hills with the lead over Tenora Rams going to send up 5, 6, and 7 Harris, Bosselman, and Plasma to face Sebastian Stevens and Stevens has put the Rams down four innings he's yet to allow a hit or a run she's struck out six and walked two one of those was the man stepping in Luke Harris First pitch to Luke is outside for a ball. One ball and no strikes here to start the bottom of the fifth on Harris. Swing and a miss by Luke. Luke, one of the senior members of the Rams baseball team. 1-1 one, one pitch stays a bit outside. Two balls and a strike. 2-1 pitch from Stevens to Harris. Outside strike. Called. Two balls and two strikes to the right fielder, Luke Harris. Swung on and missed. Down goes Harris. Seventh strikeout for Stevens. Hunter Bosselman. Going to step in for Tenora. Bosselman struck out in the second. Comes in with a 265 average and 13 runs batted in. First pitch is fouled back. Parsons given chase as the rain starts to fall here. Now, mind you, if it does rain all the way through and they do stop it, they will have to come back and complete the game with it being a tournament game. So the rain, if it does come down hard for a considerable amount of time that they cannot resume, the teams will return, assuming tomorrow, for completion of the contest. We're at the bottom of the fifth at 6-0 Ottawa Hills. Stevens pitch to Bosselman. Misses one ball, one strike, one out, bases empty. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here. On an hour and 15 minutes old. 
Sheriff's ball. Two just misses to Bosselman. A little bit low. We both have a one pitch coming. I try to get some stories in, but <laughs> Stevens worked so quickly that I can. That one is deflected onto the on deck circle. Three balls and a strike. Otto Hills actually had a concert, a choir concert, I believe, a couple days ago, and several of the boys' baseball players are in that concert. Well, the concert attire was all black. Three one pitch. We'll finish our story after this. High and away, ball four, so Bosselman draws a one-out walk. Hunter trots down to first base. So the kids that are on the baseball team that are in the Otto Hills concert actually showed up in uniform and just sort of blended in with the rest of the ensemble. I'm looking, I'm looking, I mean, unless you don't know that they're there in baseball uniforms, you don't notice them. Pitch, strike call to Eli Plasman. Plasman 0 for 1 with a strikeout. 6 nothing. Rams trail. Still looking for their first hit. Third base runner. All on walks. That's low. Ball one, strike one. But that was on the Twitter page for Ottawa Hills Baseball, which I thought was kind of neat for the kids to do their baseball game then show up to their choir concert. Plasman fouls it back. One ball and two strikes as the rain, slight rain here at Groove Field. Nothing to stop. The only thing that would probably stop us is lightning, which I don't think that there's any in the area, according to the WTL radar. Strike three call. Plasman goes down for the second time. This time looking. That's the second out. That's the eighth strikeout for Sebastian Stevens, who is just mowing the Rams down right and left. P.J. Morlock steps in. P.J. grounded into the first baseman, unassisted his only plate appearance. First pitch to B.J. catches the inside corner. Strike called. We'll say the Rams are missing the bat of Alec Shoblin the last probably three weeks. Alec was actually first team all GMC in half a season, really. Pitch is a ball, throw it on the first base. Back safely is Bosselman. Choplin was injured, stealing third base against Ayersville in a game that was well out of hand. Pitches outside, two balls and a strike. So the Rams are missing. One of their better hitters in Alex Choplin. 350 for Alec, had two home runs and 12 RBIs. Pitches a strike, two balls and two strikes. Alec was actually just starting to get in that groove. I believe that week of, he had two solo home runs to straightaway center field. Stevens 2-2 pitch, swung on and missed. Down goes Morlock. Back-to-back -back strikeouts ends the inning for the Rams again. They go quickly. They do get a runner on. No runs for Tenora. No hits. No errors. They leave just their second runner. Heading to the top of the sixth inning here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. It is Ottawa Hills Green Bear 6 and the Tenora Rams nothing. We'll be back after this time out here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postoma Insurance and Investments. With safe money strategies offered to you by pi and I, you can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call and with experienced agents at pi and I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in the CD style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, pi and I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5.5% fixed with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. So that's 782-2500, Postuma Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Back at Groove Field, 9-1-2 and two for Ottawa Hills. Larson, then Aducci, and Pillarelli. For Ottawa Hills leading 6 0. Now batting number five, Brady Larson. Larson reached on an error and scored in the third. Singled and was caught stealing in the fourth. For Castillo, after this pitch, first pitch, outside corner strike. Castillo, five innings pitch, six hits, 
Six runs, four earned runs, struck out one in his walk two. 84 pitches for Corbin, 55 strikes. Oh, one pitch to Larson. Just misses on the outside corner. Count evens, one ball and one strike. Another radio legend retired today, unofficially retired from radio. One ball, one strike coming. Brandy, or Brady Larson, hits it. Dive by Plyer. McQuillan's in the game. We've got a couple defensive changes for the Rams. So Larson starts the inning with a single. Ty Whipkins at first, and Mason McQuillan's at second for Tenora. But Andy Briggle from 100.9. WBNO in Bryan, Ohio. Today was his last day on the radio. Been on the radio since 92. So Andy's moving on to bigger and better things. Going to work for the Bryan United way. Pitch is a little bit low. Ball one. Top of the six. Runner on first. Nobody out for Ottawa Hills. They lead 6 nothing. Two in the third. Four in the fifth for the Green Bears. Castile steps off. Aducci, the leadoff hitter, singled and scored in the third. He is one for three. Pitch is a strike called. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Winner moves on to play the 25th at 2 o'clock at Defiance High School. They'll play the winner of Hicksville and Genoa. Breaking ball is way outside. Actually sailed in back of Aducci. We have a light rain here at Rube Field. Been raining for the last inning and a half. Wind now blowing to left or right field from left to right. Castillo comes set his 2-1 pitch. Hammered center field right at Gusweiler. Takes a couple steps in, makes a nice shoestring catch. Grady put it away for the first out. F8 now on the put out. Reddick Pillarelli steps in. Pillarelli was hit by a pitch in the first, sacrificed in the third, and scored in the fifth. So Pillarelli's been hit by a pitch twice and scored a run. Has no official at-bats with the sacrifice and the two hit by pitches. First pitch is a ball. Runner at first. Larson leads away. Larson with 10 stolen bases on the season. Right. 1-0 pitch from Castile. Misses outside. Two balls and no strikes. Yep. Six runs, seven hits, airless ball, four out of hills, no runs, no hits, one air for the Rams. <laughs> Throw to first base, back with the head first dive is Larson. Regardless of the outcome, this is the last official game here for us at Group Field. The Rams do come back and win, they'll move on to Defiance High School. Pitches fouled off third base side, Ward gives chase, it's out of play on the third base side. <laughs> Umbrellas are out here at Group Field. For light ring continues to fall. Steele leans in, gets the sign. 2 1 pitch coming for the senior ID. Player Rally squares around the butt, fouls it off, third base side. Count evens, two balls and two strikes. But for those of you interested, we will have Lady Rams softball tomorrow. Coach Fairchild has the Rams in the district finals for the second straight year and just a second year of coaching. Fantastic job by Coach Fairchild and Lady Rams. 2-2 pitch, swung on. Well, pop fly to third baseman Taryn Ward. Drifts a little bit toward shortstop and puts it away with the one-handed catch to retire particular rally for the second out. F5 on the put out. It's going to bring up the number three hitter, the center fielder, A.J. George. George has caused a lot of havoc here today. <laughs> Been on base all three times. Was hit by a pitch in the first. And an RBI double off the wall in the third. And singled and scored in the fifth. Pitch is drilled in the gap. Gus Weiler goes over. Dive.
drives, can't make the play, goes all the way to the wall. Larson hits third, he's gonna score standing up. George, he stops the second with his second RBI double of the contest. AJ George. Two RBIs, two doubles. And puts the Green Bear up, seven nothing here in the top of the sixth. Now, Sebastian seven, Stevens. Sebastian Stevens. Stevens at the plate is 0 for 2. That's about the only thing he's done wrong here tonight. Well, this is actually the only thing he's done wrong. Oh, he actually walked in the third. Yes. 0 for 2 with the walk. Swings a little tapper back to Castillo. Corbin fires over to Wimpkin at first in time to retire the Green Bear. 1-3 on the put out for the third out. In the inning, Ottawa Hills adds another run. They do so with two hits. No errors and one left on base. Headed to the bottom of inning number six here at Groove Field. It is Ottawa Hills, the Green Beers, the Green Beer, Green <laughs> Green Bears 7 and the Rams of Tenora nothing here on your Drop Zone Pizza Area Scoreboard. The Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fired Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Fired Stone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25 person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m., and Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419 785 4015 or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. Back at Tenora, Rams headed to the bottom of the sixth inning, still in search of their first hit off of Sebastian Stevens. The lefty has completely shut down the Tenora Rams offense. Five innings pitched, no hits, no runs, nine strikeouts, and three walks for Stevens. Stevens shut down the Rams last season in the district finals at Defiance High School. Last year, Stevens pitched five innings, allowed just two hits, did not allow a run, struck out eight, and walked two. Grady Gusweiler steps in. Grady sends a soft liner into center field, and it falls. Gusweiler collects the Rams' first hit here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier. Mosier, 0 for 2. Aiden. 294 on the season had, has 17 stolen bases. Stevens comes set. Works out of the set position for one of the few times here tonight. That pitches a ball. Sometimes if you get in that rhythm working out of the windup and you have to all of a sudden go into the set, kind of throws you off for a bit. Stevens 1 0 pitch to Mosier. Strike. One call to Aiden. Rams leadoff hitter. Left fielder, just a sophomore, has a very promising future over the next couple seasons for Aiden Mosier. 1-1 one, one pitch, swung on and missed. Strike two. Caden Radzik is on deck. 1-2 pitch coming from Stevens to Mosier. Ground ball, third base side. Off the third baseman's glove, he recovers, throws high. Just in time, though to get the speedy Mosier. Jackson Snyder knocked it down at third. Gathered it, threw a little bit high. Jason Brito were there at first, snagged it in time to retire Mosier for the first out. Down to second goes Gus Weiler. So Grady's at second with one out. Caden Radzik steps in. Radzik walked in the first and bounced back to the pitcher. Ball gets behind the catcher. Breed can't find it. Gus Weiler, big turn of third. He holds on. So Grady down to third on the wild pitch. 
Radzik tried to bunt his last time up, bunted it just a little bit too close to the pitcher. And Stevens threw out Radzik. 7 nothing here in the bottom of the sixth. Ottawa Hills on top of Tenora. Pitch is a bit high. One ball or two balls and a strike to the Rams junior shortstop. Caden will be back next year. Already a two-year starter. Pitch is fouled off first base side. Two balls and a strike. One out. Gus Weiler a third. So furthest the Rams have gotten the runner with Radzik being thrown out at second in the first inning. Radzik drills it in the gap. That's going to go to the wall. Hits the wall. Bounces away. Scoring is Gus Weiler. Radzik stops at second. So the Rams are on the board here in the bottom of the sixth with their first run. They now trail 7-1. Dalton Wolfer is going to step in, so Caden Radzik collects his 24th RBI of the season on the double. Dalton Wolfram, 421 coming in, is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Stevens comes set. First pitch to Wolfram's in the dirt. Radzik's going to head down to third on the wild pitch. So Caden in scoring position with one out now. Line on Stevens. Five and a third innings pitch. Two hits, one run. Struck out nine walk threes. Approaching 100 pitches. He's got 97 pitches. Two balls and no strikes now to Dalton Wolfram. 97 pitches, 58 strikes. Stevens catches the outside corner. Two balls, or one ball and a strike. Pitch coming. Foul back. One and two. Two Dalton Wolfram. Terry Ward is on deck. Rams finally collected their first hit and their first run this inning. Still trail by six. They're in the bottom of the sixth. Stevens pitches inside to Dalton Wolfram. Radzik leads from third. That was a pitch to Dalton Wolfram, swung on and fouled back. Rams trying to mount a comeback here in the bottom of the sixth off of the junior lefty, Sebastian Stevens. Pitches outside. Down the first base goes Dalton Wolfram. We're going to bring up Taryn Ward. Wolfram, always a threat to go. For Stevens, that's his fourth walk. We have a timeout. Pitching show, pitching coach will head out there and have a word with Stevens where Ward and Radzik will meet with Rams head coach Brett Renolette. We said coaching wizards here at Drew Field. Yeah, it was nice. For Ottawa Hills, Chris Hardman, 43 seasons as a head coach at Ottawa Hills. And for head coach Brent Renolette, 23 seasons here at Tenora. Recently picked up his 400th win in the green and white and has for BR, including his Delta career, 455 total career wins. So I don't actually have the total career wins for Coach Hartman. <laughs> Quite a few. It was probably six, 700, it would be my guess. Hard time finding stuff on the TAC conference for baseball. It's like literally impossible. Like, I don't even know who won the conference. You could not literally find that anywhere. They don't even have a website. First pitch swung on and missed. Strike one. The only reliable source was Max Preps, and that's 50% accurate on a lot of stuff. Stevens 0 1 pitch to Ward. Just misses. Count evens at a ball and a strike. One ball, one strike, one out. Rams have runners at the corners. They trail 7-1 as they bat here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Stevens comes set. His 1-1 to Ward. Swung on and miss. Strike two. Bastion Stevens. Lefty on the hill for Ottawa Hills. 1-2 pitch coming. Check swing stays high. Two balls and two strikes to Taryn Ward. Luke Harris on deck for Tenora. 2-2 two -two pitch coming. A little bit low. Count goes full. 
And Stevens well over the 100 pitch mark now, 108 pitches for Stevens. Stevens comes set. Ward asks for time. Stevens steps off the mound, walks behind it. Steps back on. Rams runners lead from first and third. Full count pitch coming to Ward. Strike! Three called. Ward caught looking. Ward struck out three times here tonight. It's going to bring up Luke Harris. Harris walked in the second and struck out in the fifth for Stevens. He now has 10 strikeouts. Rand's running out of time and outs as the rain continues to fall here softly. Strike to Luke Harris, senior right fielder. 282 for Luke on the season. Pitch just misses. It's been a little bit low. One ball and a strike to Luke Harris. Stevens 1-1 one, one coming to Harris. Check swing, just misses outside. One ball and, or two balls and a strike. Stevens gets the ball and he's ready to go. He wastes no time whatsoever. 2-1 pitch coming to Harris. Swung on. Popped up on the infield. Stevens calls it. Puts it away for the final out. Harris pops out to Stevens just between the pitcher's mound and third base. In the inning, the Rams finally collect their first hit and their first run for Tenora in the bottom of the sixth. One run, two hits, no errors, two Rams left on. Headed to the seventh inning as the rain starts to fall a little bit harder here at Group Field. It is Ottawa Hill seven and Tenora one. We'll be back right after this on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Back at Groove Field here at Sonora High School. Top of the seventh we go. Ottawa Hills with a 7-2 lead, or 7-1 lead over the Rams. For Ottawa Hills, 5, 6, and 7. Going to have a pinch hitter. Jackson, Jackson Snyder will not hit. Sean Brandt, the senior, will hit for Snyder. Snyder was 0 for 2, walked and scored a run in the fifth. So pinch hitting is Jackson Snyder here in the seventh. So Snyder will be his first plate appearance here today. For the Green Bear. Now batting number 15. And on the season, 245 for Brandt has 14 runs batted in. Castillo still on the mound for the Rams. Senior righty, Corbin Castillo, long look in. Winds it up. First pitch, stays high, ball one. Feels like football weather. Yeah, it does. Castile's 1 0 to Brandt. Swung on, hit deep center field. Gusweiler going back, still going back, puts it away with an over the shoulder catch, retiring. Snyder, Snyder gave it a ride. Now batting number 19. First out. Nepper. Look, Nepper steps in. Nepper, 1 for 3, has two runs batted in and has scored a run. Castile winds it up. First pitch to Nepper, way outside. Ball one. Castile's worked six and a third. Allowed eight hits, seven runs, five earned runs. Struck out one and walked two. He's at a 100 pitch mark with 65 strikes. 
pitch. Bit high, two balls and no strikes to Luke Nepper. Nepper, the number six hitter, plays in left field. 378 for Nepper. Castillo's pitch, drilled left field right at Mosier. Hayden snags that line drive. It's one of those line drives that's hit right at you. Seems like a big beach ball coming out there floating. That's a second out here on the top of the seventh. Ottawa Hills leads seven to one. No, no, no. <laughs> nice Barnes, the DH, is going to step in. Barnes struck out in the second, grounded out in the fourth, and doubled in the fifth. Swung on this one, drills it deep left field. Mosier cruises into the gap and puts it away. So three flyouts here in the seventh inning. Ottawa Hills goes in order, no runs, no hits. No errors and nobody left on. Last chance for the Rams. Final three outs coming up as Torah trails seven to one as they enter the bottom of the seventh inning. We'll be back with the Rams rally here on Tenora Rams Live. Looking for an opportunity where you can grow your career, be appreciated, and be an owner where you work? Did we say owner? Yes. Mech is an employee-owned company that is highly motivated and actively supports the communities in which our facilities are located. Mayville Engineering needs you. Mech is an employee-owned business where our focus is on our customers' success. Mech has been named the nation's number one fabricator for 12 consecutive years in a survey published by the Fabricator magazine. Join the Mech family today. Full and part-time positions are available. $1,000 sign-on bonus, 401k, vacation and holiday pay, gain-sharing program, employee stock ownership, medical, dental, and vision insurance, short-term and long-term disability, and shift premiums for second and third shift. Visit our website, mechinc.com. Click on careers or visit the 21 Seneca Street lobby at the Defiance location. Back here at Group Field. Final three outs for the Rams season. Unless they extend it, they trail seven to one. Sebastian Stevens heads back out. He's got 113 pitches, 66 strikes. He's allowed two hits, one run. He struck out 10 Rams, and he has walked four. So he's going to try and close out the Rams here in the bottom of the seventh. First batter, Hunter Bosselman. First pitch to Hunter is a strike. Bosselman, Plasman, Morlock, and then Gus Weiler to face Stevens. 0-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Bosselman struck out in the second, walked in the fifth. 0-2 pitch coming, just misses. One ball and two strikes to the Rams first baseman, sophomore Hunter Bosselman. Stevens winds it up, pitch coming, strike three called. Bosselman goes down to Eli Plasman. For the first out, it's gonna bring up the Rams senior second baseman, Eli Plasman. Eli struck out swinging in the second, struck out looking in the fifth. Eli enters 306. Had a heck of a season on the mound as well, Eli did. Time out. Coach Hardman going to go out there. Talk to his senior's junior lefty. I do you. Going to have a new pitcher. No, not that one. All right, here we go, Stevens. Yeah, she's too blind. Judy is her name. Has 117 pitches, so he may have reached his. I'm not sure if he reached his limit or they're just taking him out for the ovation. But Eli steps in for Eli on the mound. He was four and one, had 47 of the third innings pitched, ERA of 266. So Eli is a pitcher, very solid season as well. And relief coming in for Stevens will be Jackson Snyder. So Snyder takes over with one out here in the seventh. Jackson Snyder on the mound this season for the Ottawa Green Bear. 34 innings pitched. He's pitched in 11 games. He started four. Jackson Snyder has allowed 
29 hits in those 34 and a third innings, 14 runs, 12 earned runs. Snyder's struck out 53 and walked just 22. His ERA is 2.47. Snyder actually has just six innings pitched less than Sebastian Stevens. So Stevens could win it. He cannot lose it. Snyder enters with a 7-1 lead and one out and no runners on. He's going to pitch out of the set position. Snyder comes set. First pitch to Plasma and inside. Ball one. Snyder gets the sign. 1-0 pitches. High and away. Ball two. Jackson Snyder just a sophomore and he's bringing some heat. Pitch is a strike. Snyder actually he pierces through harder than Sebastian Stevens. Through three pitches. 2-1 pitch coming to Plasma. He swings and shallow fly ball to center field. Center fielder calls for it and makes the play. A.J. George puts it away for out number two. So Rams down to their final out. Trailing 7-1 here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Riley Peters is going to get a pinch hit. So Peters is going to hit for Morlock here in the bottom of the seventh. Gus Weiler is on deck for Sonora. 7-1 Ottawa Hills. Bottom of the seventh. Two outs. Jackson Snyder on in relief. First pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one to Riley Peters. Snyder's on one to Peters. Strike two. Swung on and miss. Rams down to their final strike here in the 2023 season. Inside chases Peters back off the plate. One ball and two strikes. Snyder comes set. Pitch to Peters. Just misses. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Stay tuned. Bidlack Insurance and Investments post game show after this. Pitch swung on, fouled back. Two balls and two strikes to junior first baseman Riley Peters. Two two pitch coming. Strike three call. Peters goes down looking. That ends the game. Ottawa Hills advance to the Defiance District next Thursday. And Ottawa Hills will play the winner of Hicksville and Genoa, which is taking place right now. In the inning for the Rams, no runs, no hits, no errors for Ottawa Hills. And the Rams leave nobody on base. Final, 7-1. We'll be back with the Bidlack Insurance and Investments postgame show right after this. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back here at Sonora High School's Drew Field, welcome to the Bidlack Insurance and Investments postgame show. Ottawa Hills moves on with a 7-1 win over Tenora, ending their season. Rams' season ends at 19-6. Ottawa Hills, they move on. They move to 18-11. Ottawa Hills, seven runs, eight hits, no errors for Tenora. One run, two hits, and two errors. Winner was Sebastian Stevens. 
Stevens dominant here today. Six in the third, two hits, one run. That was earned. Struck out 11 Rams and walked four. Boss goes to Corbin Castillo. Castillo, pitching as good as anybody in the area coming in, allowed, or pitched seven innings, allowed eight hits, seven runs, five earned runs. He struck out one and walked two. Ottawa Hills struck with two in the third off a A.J. George double to the wall and left. Scored five more in the fifth to grab a six-run lead, 6 nothing. They added an insurance run in the sixth to go ahead 7 nothing. Rams actually did not collect their first hit <laughs> off of Sebastian Stevens until the sixth inning. And that first hit was Caden Radzik. So the Rams' valiant effort here today just came up with a much better opponent. Even though Ottawa Hills is number two seed, they come in, as we said, with a 17 and 11 record. They play a lot of Division One and Division Two teams, so a bit deceiving on their 17 and 11 record. Which the Rams do the same. The Rams finish at 19 and six. Um, and I don't think anybody, including players and coaching staff, if you told them at the end of the season they'd be playing for a sectional championship at home and they would have the number one seed in the district with a 19-5 record, there's nobody in the world that would have said that that's where the Rams would have been. But thanks again, everybody, for watching and listening. Um, for the boys, so goodbye to the senior class. It's always hard. Help them move all their stuff out. Come back home. So. Luke Harris, yeah. Corbin Castile, Ty Lipkin, we will. Eli Plasman, we will. Yeah. Dalton Wolfram, and Taryn Ward. Hey, you be careful. Yeah, you too, okay? You're good. Okay. Yeah, you care. need help with anything? You need yeah. help with Thank that. you for sure. Yep. a fantastic you season. Care. All right. <laughs> it, was, it was a great ride. Yeah, it really was. We will. Okay. But thank you. Watch for everything you've done in the green and white. Harris, Castile, Whipkin, Plasman, Wolfram, and Taryn Ward have set the bar high, just like the seniors last year and the seniors before them have set the bar high. So this 19 and six team, the next year's team of 2024, that's a very promising future. You look at the team ahead, BJ Morlock, be a senior, AJ, or Aiden Mosier be a junior. Connor Wolfram, senior. Riley Peters, Caden Radzik, both seniors. Hunter, fabulous sophomore class of the year. Bosselman, Shoblin, Mason McQuillan, Adam Spicella down at the JV level will all be up here. Grady Gusweiler coming back as a senior. So Rams, as always, do not rebuild. They just reload. So we appreciate everybody for tuning in this game and all season long for you baseball only listeners it's not a goodbye it's a we'll see you next season and for those of you who listen all year long we'll be back tomorrow lady rams softball will be a 12 40 signs excavating pregame with a one o'clock bat and stevens first pitch so Thanks to our sponsors, PSN Sports, Weber Bookkeeping, Maui Valley Title Agency, Clubhouse Pizza and Nay, Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Optimal Performance and Fitness, Drop Zone Pizzeria, and Ayersville and Striker, Higby Embroidery, Science Excavating, Firestone Tavern, Oklahoma Tavern, Northwest Ohio Sports, Bat and Stevens Body Shop, Toronto Rams Athletic Boosters, Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon, Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun Shop, Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, Wiener Hill, Weber and Stanley, Attorneys at Law, Postum Insurance and Investments, and finally, Mayfield Engineer Corporation. Start your MET career today. If you're looking for a job, $1,000 sign-on bonus. Head down to the 21 Seneca Street Lobby and fill an application today, or you can go to metcareers.com. So, for the final time, Ottawa Hills with a very impressive Sebastian Stevens unhittable here tonight. 7-1 win over Tenora. They will advance to play the winner of Genoa and Hicksville Thursday at 2 o'clock at Defiance. Rams see their season end at 19-6. and six. And as we said, a final thank you and a salute to 
to the Rams Senior Class of Six. Luke Harris, Corwin Castillo, Ty Wimpkin, Eli Plasman, Dalton Wolfram, and Taryn Ward. Thank you for all you have done in the green and white. You have added another building block to the Tenora Rams baseball program that you have etched your name in Tenora history. So thank you, boys, for all you have done throughout Little League all the way through high school. And everybody here does appreciate each and every one of you. So we'll see everybody tomorrow at Holland for the Lady Rams playing for a district championship versus Eastwood. Have a good Friday night, everybody. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action and follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio.